We're back with Roger Gill at his home on Appleseed Road in East Tam. The date is still June 14th, 2023. And we're going to be asking Roger about activities in the town and in the schools uh, when he was growing up. So. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the church earlier. What church was oh, it? Was the East Ham Methodist Church. Okay. Um, my mother and, my, and her mother uh, did a lot of volunteer work there. They were one of the prime movers when they moved the building. They did a lot of that work along with the, Marcus' dad and my dad and whoever else they could scrounge up for volunteer work. It was all, uh, all volunteers. I think Bill Hoffman did the, did the actual moving with his heavy equipment, but uh, Mother and, and Grammy Daly did uh, a bunch of work on the church, remodeling. Uh, I think they, Mother might even built the pews. Uh, Wow. And when they, they couldn't afford any, any pews, and I think they, uh, when they remodeled it, moved it and remodeled it, and mother and, and grandmother rebuilt the, the pews. Uh, the, uh, the women's group, the, I think your mom was part of the women's group there, too. They, they used yeah. to have a lot of, they'd have church suppers, they'd have uh, the minstrel show. I remember the annual minstrel show at the town hall was one of the, the big <laughs> highlights of the, of the uh, year. Um, and Sunday school, I was always... Uh, only one person had more Sunday school bars than I did. That was Matilda Smart. She was probably in her, I thought she was 90, but she was probably in her 60s. <laughs> uh, and she was the only one that had more uh, perfect attendance medals than I did. I, I think I might have had so many. Grammy Daly was the superintendent of the Sunday school. I, I think she might have given me credit for some days that I had family things to do. Matilda but, Smart, I know that yeah. name. She lived in the old town hall building next to the hillside. Oh, oh, The, the okay. building used to be the town hall yeah. years and years ago. Yeah. Uh, and I had delivered papers to her also. I said, I, I thought she was ancient at the time. I think she lived to be 90-something. Uh, and she was always a very spry old, old girl. She was uh, always had a, a, a quick comment and something sharp to say. And she was a very interesting person. I'd like to ask you a question. There's a house up by the little cemetery. Do you know who lives there? It's not far from my house, and I have no idea who lives in that house. Next, right next to the little congregational cemetery. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, Did you ever deliver there? No, I didn't. I, mean, I know the the people that lived there. But they had a, they had a foster child that lived with them. They used to walk around. Uh, East Ham, a big, tall, lanky guy who's African American, uh, probably the only one in East Ham at the time. Alan, Alan was his name. Great guy. I, I, I used to love to talk to Alan. Yeah. Uh, and he uh, was he your age? He was no, he was older than me. Yeah. Uh, but he was he was either a foster child or or he was adopted. And he used to walk all the time. He would walk everywhere. Uh, huh. And I, I can't think of the people's names that lived in that house. So. Uh, uh, I'll call you about 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, we're going to think of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd be interested. Yeah. 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 Tell us about the library. Yeah, yeah. the library was big. I loved the library. I loved to read when I was a kid. I yeah. still love to read. I read a lot. Um, and I used to spend, the library was open, I think, like three days a week, maybe. And I would, I would be there every day it was open. I had my own library card. Uh, you didn't have a card in those days. You just had an account. You just put the... They had a little card in the box, and they they put the uh, name of the book or the, the number of the book on the card, and that you could you could check, had a limit. You could only check out two or three books at a time. But I always had library books at, at home, and I was always reading library books. Um, we all, we used to go over there. A lot of us would meet over there. Uh, you know, the kids would meet there. A lot of the kids in town would uh, would meet at the library. And we'd have, uh, you know, talks and social events, and we'd have to go outside to talk. They were very strict in library in those days about talking in the library. You had to whisper and be very careful. <laughs> and we would, uh, we'd go, we'd say we're going to the library. We'd go down back to the pond and go swimming lots of times. <laughs> it was called Depot Pond in those days. I think they've they've changed the name of it now. They they keep changing the names of these ponds around town to make them sound better. But, uh, but we we spent a lot of time swimming in that pond behind the behind the library. They have a swimming place now. Yeah. 
Too late, right? Yeah, yeah right behind public. Yeah, Kelly's, my, my, my grandchildren when came from Italy a couple of summers and worked here. They would walk over to the pond and go swimming over there. Uh, so it was very nice, yeah. Yeah. Remember there was a path across from Bridge Road, almost, to the right of that house? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, there, was a little, to, there was a little beach right down there, too. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't park there now, but yeah. back then, everybody did. Yeah. That's the yeah. house my mom grew up in. That yeah. house? <laughs> the yellow one? Oh, no, no, no. Across the street, on the pond side. Yeah, across oh. on the pond side, yeah. Oh. It was, I think there was, it was a summer, summer house. There were summer people that lived there, but, yeah. but they had a, a little beach that everybody used to use. Yeah. yeah. I remember uh, skin diving there, or just yeah. diving, and there right. was a big coil of barbed wire or something. Oh, yeah. Huge. Not surprised. It was, yeah. hmm. I don't know what that was from. Or, I think people, you know. the old people would throw stuff in the pond to get rid of it, I think. So yeah. They figured nobody would see it. Yeah. <laughs> Fell off a wagon and rolled yeah, down the hill. Right, yeah. You know? <laughs> Could have been from the depot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it could have come off the train. Yeah. yeah. What about school? Elementary yeah, I, school? Yeah, I started school in East Ham Elementary. Um, the uh, My first grade teacher was Vesta Gould. She was uh, my dad's aunt. Uh, she taught first and second grade. They had two grades in, in uh, for first and second. And third and fourth was Mrs. Handel. She had two grades in her <laughs> class. And then when we got to fifth grade, it was big time. We had Mrs. Maycumber. <laughs> Oh, she said the fifth grade, and Otto Nickerson, the principal, had the the sixth grade. Um, I love school. I school was a really. I was very successful. I did well in school in elementary school. I worked harder than I did later. Uh, but uh, we used to have. Uh, Oh, I, I delivered papers, newspapers to all the all the teachers. Every every <laughs> every one of them was on my paper route at one time or another. <laughs> But we would have, um, we, we'd have to, in, in Mr. Nickerson's class, we uh, would have to do uh, report books that we read for the week, and everybody would get a little star or something if you read so many books. And I always had a, a much longer list than, the, than I had read. Uh, I used a lot of classic <laughs> comic book, uh, the, they're like cliff notes, only the, the classic comic book edition of the books. I would. I'm yeah. sure that the, that the teachers knew that I wasn't reading everything that I said I was, but they gave me the credit. Uh, it, uh, How was he, Otto Nickerson? He was, he was always good to me. He had a, a big strap hanging on the wall, though, and I'd heard stories about people getting the strap. I never saw anyone get it, or I never knew of anyone that got it, but it, it, just the threat of it was enough to make us behave, I think. It was there. <laughs> it yeah. was there, yes. Yeah. 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 How about high school? Uh, yeah, high school. I had a lot of fun in high school. I uh, <laughs> I wasn't the best student. Uh, my I passed and graduated, but I had a lot of fun in high school. I started doing a lot of acting in high school. Oh, I, speaking of acting, I in the second grade we had a Tom Thumb wedding. Uh, was one of our big activities of the year. I I married uh, Karen Nickerson and. Uh, Billy Hawkinson was my best man, and uh, Joyce Nickerson was Karen's bridesmaid, and uh, oh, Peter Peter Anderson was the preacher for the for the wedding. Uh, it was quite a production, and we it was a, a popular thing in the day. Uh, the Tom Thumb weddings with little kids to do an act, did an actual wedding. It was the, the first time I got married was in the second grade. <laughs> and I continued my acting career in, in high school, junior high school and high school. I did a lot of one-act plays and every year uh, each class would put on a play. Uh, we had variety shows with uh, a lot of different acts. Uh, I did, uh, I really enjoyed acting and did a lot, had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, also, uh, my best buddy in high school, Jim Earhart, and I were we were kind of hellions, uh, and the principal, principal Al Magrino, he was going to make Jimmy and I responsible, so he, he put us in charge of the supply room, uh, and we were in charge of getting the requests from the teachers and delivering the supplies to him in our free periods. He, he put us to work. Uh, I think I still have some pads of paper and some pencils that were confiscated from them, 
and of course we all the, te the teachers that we liked always got much better service than the ones we didn't like and they always they always got a full order if, if we were short on something the, the teachers we didn't like would, would get shorted on their supplies <laughs> but it, it was a good experience we, we also uh, started a school store there was a person from Wallfleet that was I don't remember their name but they uh, they donated they they were um, record reviewers, the uh, LP, 33 and a third albums, they reviewed record albums and they got all these albums from companies that were stamped not for resale and they donated them to the school and the school started a, a store and uh, sure. Jimmy and I worked there doing that and we uh, branched out, we developed a, a school jacket uh, and uh, we sold the school jackets out of there. Uh, and we had a bunch of other little things. It was in the in the back of the, in the library in the new part of the, in the new building of the school. That was a <clears throat> go back a little bit. We were the uh, first class to go all the way through NASA uh, from freshmen through seniors. And they had a uh, a meet and greet. We were, we were bringing in the people from Wellfleet, and they had a meet and greet thing like the end of our eighth grade year. And that's where I met my wife. Now, Stephanie, I, that day I looked at her and I said, that's the girl for me, and it took us about 50 years to get together, but we did it. Uh, and that was when they just had the old school, uh, and they started building the new school while we were there. And we, we used to sneak out and, and smoke cigarettes in the construction area with the construction workers. That was a big treat for the day. And your, your spare period, if you'd go out there and they, they'd... The, the guy, the work guys would give you cigarettes if you needed them. <laughs> it was, uh, and I did a lot of other stuff. I was active in student government. Um, I was class president one year, and I was always on the, the student council, and I got interested in doing things like that. And I was uh, a member of the uh, Future Teachers of America. I, my dream was to become a school teacher when I was a young kid, which I never did until I got into the Army Reserve, uh, I finally became a teacher. <laughs> I taught command, command and general staff college there for eight years, and that was uh, fulfilled my dreams of being a teacher yeah. just a little bit later. Uh, hmm. Did you ever do scouts? Yeah, we did. Uh, I did uh, Cub Scouts. Uh, my mother was the den leader for, for Cub Scouts, and we always had the, the best den because mother would make all the things that we, <laughs> we needed. She, she'd let us help, but she supervised very closely all the things that we did. Uh, and then I was, later on I was, I was a Boy Scout, but uh, they kind of asked me not to come back to Boy Scouts after we went on a camping trip, and the, the Scoutmaster was, was taking a leak in the woods, and I think it was Wayne Joseph and I threw a cherry bomb at him. <laughs> <laughs> He stopped and he, he couldn't he couldn't pee again for a couple of days, <laughs> and I think that was the end of our, our Boy Scout activities. <laughs> uh, speaking of Wayne, uh, a couple of things back, Wayne had a he had a baseball field at his house. We it was where the uh, across from the the uh, hillside restaurant, the lot where the lobster yeah. shanty is now. That was the old state police barracks, uh, and he had a baseball field there, and I wanted a baseball field so. My mother built me a baseball field out behind our house uh, between the sand pits that we used uh, a lot. And also Wayne's dad and his uncle uh, were in the station at the Coast Guard station in, in East Ham. We used to spend a lot of time over there when we were younger. They had a pool table. That was the, the big attraction. Uh, and while uh, speaking of the Coast Guard, the Coast Guard station was uh, was really fun because they had all this big heavy equipment and they had a, a thing called a duck. It was a D U K W. It was a. It wasn't a military acronym. It was the the model of uh, the model numbers from General Motors. That's why they were called D U K Ws. And they were an they were a two and a half ton truck chassis that were made into an amphibious vehicle. This one, it sitting an old one sitting down the end of the road here at the gas station. CJ's repair now, but yeah. my dad used to work on that when he worked for Hermie Dill. Uh, and after they worked on it, they'd have to take it down to Great Pond for a test run. He'd always take me for that. We have always had a great time riding in the duck. That was, we thought that was pretty good fun. Wow. And 
They, they use a lot of cities use them now for parades and sightseeing tours. Uh, they, they still run them amphibious. They run them on the land and in the water. They're pretty old. And we could talk about the windmill a little bit. <laughs> windmill was a great thing. I used, to, I used to love to go to the windmill and, and listen to the, I think Harold Cole was the, was the miller in those days. And I used to love to listen to his presentation. I had it all down pat. I was ready to, to take over <laughs> as the miller when I got older. Uh, I knew everything about it. I've forgotten most of it now, but just how the, the mill was made and how they <clears throat> would grind the, the corn and... Uh, what did you think older was? Oh, old, old 30 was probably older. Probably yeah, more. right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and our, the, we used to have, they used to have an annual square dance at the windmill. Uh, that was with one of the big social events of the year. Jay, uh, Jay Schofield was the caller for uh, the windmill square dance, and that was a big social event of the year. We also, Jay did, uh, he did square dancing lessons at the town hall. Uh, it was one day after school. I think it was, it might have been a, a quarter when we started out. Uh, you had to pay a quarter for the for the lesson. To, <laughs> it was kind of a donation for the thing. But Jay taught us all how to square dance. It was, that was a lot of fun. It was, uh, but the town hall was another big place that we used to visit a lot. They had a pool table downstairs, I think. It was either the, the Grange or the, Oh, the fire department had had the pool table down there, but we would used to sneak down there and play pool on it. And they, they'd some days they'd let us, some days they wouldn't. The the police station was in one. They had like two little closets. We we'll call it their office down in the basement of the town hall. Another the, the town hall. The, the, they used to have the record hops there on Saturday nights. That was always a, a big thing. They had a, a disc jockey from Boston who came down and would run the record hops there. Sock hops. Yeah. Yeah. They. Uh, on the, the annual uh, annual Christmas party, uh, my my grandfather, my dad's dad, was. Uh, they talked him into playing Santa Claus one year, and the guy that usually did it was sick or something. And they they got him up in the. They had this big wooden fake chimney that my mother had built, and it had a platform on the inside of it. And Santa would get in there early and stand on the platform and and jump, come down through the. <laughs> the chimney and jump out with his bag of toys and have a gift for everybody. And Grandpa Freddy did it one year. He, he, he jumped down out of the chimney and his pants fell down around his ankles. <laughs> it was, it, it was the, the funniest party they ever had at Christmas time. <laughs> but, uh, what and, about Grandpa Freddy? Yeah, that was one thing. Grandpa Freddy was a, a big influence in my life. He, he worked at the, the store down the street of the Superette uh, when Mrs. Barton had it, and then he worked for the Browns when they had it. Um, but Grandpa Freddie used to take me on Saturdays. He'd have a, a route that he'd go out, and he'd pick me up, and we'd go to, we'd stop at the old Collins Farm on uh, Bridge Road. It was just down the street from uh, Dyer Prince and Bridge Road, to headed towards East Ham. On the on the left hand side, there was Harry Collins had this big old farm there. He had a couple of cows and chickens and pigs, and he had an old tractor that he'd put in first gear or low gear, and they put me on the tractor. And it would in low gear, you didn't have to shift it; it would just idle along, and, and he'd let me drive it around the thing. And he and Grandpa Freddie would go in the barn and have a snot. <laughs> that was that was usually the first stop on Saturday mornings. Uh, from there, we'd go up to uh, Snow Store, and old Harry Snow, he and Grandpa Freddie would go down in the basement, and they'd have a drink there. And then we'd go over to, uh, sometimes he'd stop at Steele's Barbershop, sometimes we wouldn't stop there. That was a less frequent stop, but he, he'd go in and have a belt with old Malcolm Steele at the barbershop. And then we'd stop by uh, the Smith Brothers store, and he and the Smith brothers, they'd go out in the back room where they cut the pipes there. They, they had a bottle out there. He'd have a belt with them. Uh, and then we'd head down to the duck farm, and down to the old Mayo's duck farm. They'd send me out in the yard to look at the ducks, and they'd, Grandpa Freddie would have a belt with them. He, he was quite a guy. He, he did a lot of drinking, but I don't ever think I saw Grandpa Freddie drunk or out of control, but uh, he, he loved his whiskey. He, he drank... Uh, Three Feathers, I think it was, or Four Roses. It was, it was the cheapest whiskey you could buy. He'd, he'd, at home, he'd, he'd, he'd fill a, an old jelly glass about half full, and he'd just, no ice, and he'd just drink it neat. And 
But I say he, he loved to drink, that he'd never, uh, say, I don't think I ever really saw him drunk. Yeah. Another, one time I, I went up to his house there and I, I, I'd seen him polishing the car one week, so I, I went out in the garage and I got, put polish all over the whole car. I didn't know, I had no idea how to do it, what I was doing. I just covered the whole car with polish. And then one of his buddies came along and went in the house and he says, Fred, he says, the boy's got white stuff all over the car. <laughs> and Grandpa Freddy came out and that was one of the few times I ever saw him get a little bit angry. <laughs> he, he was always good natured and uh, he, but he, he just, he wiped the polish off for me and boy, that stuff was caked on. He had a heck of a job getting that <laughs> off of there. Yeah. Then uh, Grandpa Freddy at, at the store, that was, uh, he had quite a good time there. He and uh, your Uncle Bob was the postmaster <laughs> there and Grandpa Freddy was working on the counter. And every time the, one of the delivery men come back, come to drop off the, the uh, Billy Robichaud, the, the milk guy and uh, I think Wally Drown was the ice guy, and there were two, there was Tip Top Bread Guy and the Sunbeam Bread Guy. They were from off Cape, and Grandpa Freddie would, <clears throat> he, had his, he, carried, he used to keep his hip boots in the back room. He told people there because he go, went cohogging on his lunch hour. Well, he kept a quad in him, that's what he did. <laughs> and every time one of the delivery guys would come along, he, he'd call a Bob, <clears throat> Bob the postmaster, he'd say, Bob, we got a meeting. <laughs> and Bob would come out and Grandpa Fred, they'd go out and have a, have a belt with the, with the, the truck, the delivery drivers. Uh, that was a, quite a thing to, to witness. The, the post office the, was there. The post office was inside the store in those days, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then they, they moved it out where the, where the liquor store is now. The post office moved into there for a little while. And then they moved yeah. it over here oh, where it is oh, now. Oh. <clears throat> they had a, the gas station now. I was always good friends with the, the people at the gas station. It, uh, all the, the guys who were two or three years older than I was. Uh, Dr. Schneider, he was he pumped gas there for a couple of summers. This is uh, the mobile? No, the Brown store. Oh, Brown's. Yeah, oh. yeah the Superette. Uh, and uh, they were always, they said, all, the, all the guys that were there, were, they were two or three years older than I was, and I, I thought it was pretty good to hang out with them and, and pump gas. And they just let me help sometimes. That's where I started learning how to pump gas, I guess. <laughs> they had cottages there, too. Yeah, they had cottages there, yeah. Do you remember? You must remember yeah. how we many. We chambermaid, Melanie. Yeah, right. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Worked for Bernice. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Helped with the ironing and cleaning yeah. the cottages. Yeah. They... Oh, what... what are some of your favorite memories of growing up in East Ham? Or things that just really... You know, when yeah. someone asks about East, yeah. Well, I think uh, just living in the in the neighborhood with with family, I think was was ready. The, the uh, things we did as kids, we had circuses. Oh, um, the, I mean, the first day of school every year was a was a big deal. We'd get dressed up for the first day of school, and we'd go to Marcus' house, and her mother would, or my mother would would take a picture of all of us on the first day of school every year. That was always a big event, and we had. Uh, we had a lot of fun playing games there. Uh, we in the front on the they had a cement walk on the on the front, which was very good for hopscotch and uh, was a red light and uh, mother may mother I. may I uh, <laughs> yeah uh, games that kids don't play anymore I guess. <laughs> I still and, have that walkway. I had yeah. it uncovered. Yeah right. <laughs> and uh, Marcus' mom always had a big supply of board games and card games, and she was very uh, Scrabble was one of the, we always we loved to play Scrabble. That was a kind of a treat to use the Scrabble game because the, the kids had we had uh, like shoots and ladders and mm -hmm. uh, very simple board games. But to to use the Scrabble game was a, was a big treat. I remember that. Um, what about your music, Roger? Your forty five. Yeah, collection. I had I had a, a large collection of records. Uh, they disappeared while I was in the army. I, I think my mother threw them out with my baseball cards. I've, I've still got a, a few, but not the the big collection. I've I probably got a bigger collection now, but not the the actual records that I had then. Uh. Um, in my musical career, I, I played the trumpet in elementary school. Uh, and my mother also, she played trumpet in the town band. She was much better than I did because she practiced a lot more. I didn't spend much time practicing, but 
We used to play duets at the Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. um, oh, two or three times a year we would, we would play a duet in church, or play a hymn uh, with a friend I have in Jesus. Or, uh, or when we did the battle hymn of, Re of the Republic one year, that was, a, that was a tough piece to learn. And we had to learn it all, had to learn the whole song by memory. You know, mother wouldn't let us use the music. We had to yeah. memorize the whole, the whole song. And I, I really wasn't into practicing that much, but I, I did it for her. <laughs> they, uh, did you ever work in the turnip fields? Yeah. Uh, we go down in the, the Raymond Brackett's uh, term, turnip fields. After school in the fall, they would, uh, we'd pull turnips. Uh, we didn't get paid very much, but we'd go back at night and steal a few turnips to make up for what little we got paid. <laughs> it was, we always had turnips at the house. <laughs> it was, uh, and so yeah, going, uh, doing things at night, we, uh, also my father used to take me down to the Salt Pond River. We'd go through Elliot Richardson's property there at night when oyster season, or a few days before oyster season, get the pick of the crop. We'd, <laughs> we'd sneak down there and we'd drive, drive over and park on the driveway there and walk down into the, the uh, river at Salt Pond and, and collect oysters down there. We, we did a lot of, lot of shell fishing as a kid. Uh, Dad was always big on shell fishing. We, a lot of clams and oysters provided a lot of meals for us. I, I, I never did like quahog chowder. That was one of the things I, and my, my mother and father would always try to get me to eat quahog chowder. For some reason, I, I didn't like it. And one time, mother and father were going out to dinner with another couple, and I was sitting at the table eating quahog chowder and or making believe I was eating it. And they. Uh, their friends came, it was Truman and Minnie Brewer, their, their friends they were going out to dinner with, and they came in and I was sitting there at the table and Truman says, what you doing, boy? I says, eating quahog chowder and I love it. Because <laughs> 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 I was told I was going to sit there till the bowl was gone. <laughs> and I finished it. And I, to the, this day I love quahog chowder now. <laughs> <laughs> Any final remark, remarks, Roger? <laughs> this has been wonderful. Yeah, I, I, we've discussed a lot of things. I'd like to just say one thing about uh, my kids and my grandkids. Um, I'm very proud of all of them, and they bring me a lot of joy. Uh, so <clears throat> we haven't mentioned them much in this thing, no. but they, no. they've all been very successful. They all work hard, and you know they all help me out when I need help. And all their kids are all wonderful. They're great kids. They all work hard, and uh, I'm just very proud of my kids and now, my who grandkids. Are you, who are your kids and who are your grandkids? Uh, well, I, my daughter Amy teaches at the East Ham Elementary School, and my mm -hmm. son Jeff works with me at the garage. Yeah. And I have a daughter Kelly that uh, lives in Italy. She's Jeff's twin sister. Kelly was my biggest problem when when they were kids. She she always got in the most trouble, and, and had she was just a free spirit and did what she wanted to do. But she's turned out really great. Uh, she has a translation business that she runs on her own. She uh, just does it on a contract basis. Yeah. Uh, and Kelly's uh, three kids, uh, Izzy, Eliza, and Tosca, have all spent summers with me two or three times. And they, they just came over here to work and make money and take money back because the jobs for kids in Italy are hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, and they uh, say they're all very successful, have their own careers now, and they're doing well. Uh, Amy's two kids, uh, Colin and Riley, Col uh, Colin's in the Navy, stationed in Hawaii. He's a radar repair and installation in submarines. And her daughter, <coughs> Riley, just graduated from Springfield College. And my son Jeff's daughter, <coughs> Perry, is a, a great voice, great singer, uh, provides us with a lot of entertainment in the theater field, and she's going to uh, hopefully become a world-famous actress someday. And yeah. she's, she works very hard at it, and she makes us very proud. Takes after her grandfather. Right. right. <laughs> well, thank you yeah. so, that so came out, very much. Came this out is, good. Yeah, it's been yeah. very interesting. Interesting. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. And this is the end of part two. <laughs>